we've been talking about spiritual starvation. And I got to say this that nothing happens nothing happens without the mercy and the grace of God. Without the mercy and grace of God, we we wouldn't none of us would even be here. That mercy meaning that we don't really get what we deserve in life. We get God's love and we don't really deserve it and we get favor in God. That means that God just gives us this favor that we don't really deserve, but God gives it to us. And I thank God for that because I need it. Today what we're going to be talking about is looking at some, uh, you know, we try many times to get supernatural results. I'm talking about miracles. I'm going to need a miracle. I need a miracle today. Uh, we try to get supernatural results with, with carnal efforts. Trying to use our own mind, our own strength, our own validity, validating ourselves or, or intelligence or schooling or whatever we got to do it, to, to try to accomplish something. And I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, without miracles and the help of God, I'm not getting anywhere. Amen. And some of us need some miracles to get past some obstacles because yes. there's some big mountains in front of us. And, and, and there's no one going to help us. Amen. There is no one that can help us with some of those things. And the only thing that's going to turn it around is a supernatural, supernatural results. So when we get in line with God and get in line with His Word, that's when that opens up the supernatural and God just opens it up. One, one key thing is forgiving. Okay. We're not going to talk about forgiving, but forgiving is one key thing. If... if if you want to get somewhere, you just start forgiving people. Just think about the person that you would least want to forgive and just forgive them just to make the devil mad, you know, and to forgive them. And sometimes people don't forgive us, but we forgive. We're talking about spiritual starvation, and we use the idea that uh, uh, people are dying, dying spiritually because they're not eating spiritually. Amen. We talked about using the example of, of going to a restaurant and eating an uh, appetizer and then walking away from the restaurant and making that last for a whole week. And we compared that to going to church for, and listening to a message for 30 minutes and thinking we put in our time with God and expecting these huge results and some people walk away and go well I tried it I tried being a Christian and it didn't work well all you got was an appetizer right. you didn't get the whole thing today we're going to talk about self-feeding before we talked about come and feed me you come in and, and want the uh, pastors or television programs uh, Christian programs or uh, Christian radio or things like that. Uh, we use that to feed our spirits when all the time God God wants to take us to the place where he can talk with us. Okay. How about Amen. that? Amen. He wants to take us to the place where we can work things out. Have you ever had an argument with someone in your family that, that you cared about and you loved and and, 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 and you wanted that relationship to, to stay together but you're mad. You're just mad. And, and and that's kind of how it is with God. You can't run away from God. You can't hide from Him. I can't hide from Him. So we got to just deal with it. Just handle it. Come and let us reason, though your sins be as scarlet, and I will make them white as snow. That's, right. that's what He says. Yeah, yes. Isaiah one eighteen. That's what He says. So we're going to talk about feeding, about eating, eating spiritual food. And this idea of eating, uh, you know, we do communion. We do communion here. And it's easy for communion to be like a, like a ritual that you do. Uh, I was in the Assemblies of God 17 years. And we did it on the first of the month like clockwork. You know, every, every, every month we had a, had a preach around the, 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 um, uh, taking the, uh, what do you call it? 
Sacraments. Communion. I want to say yeah. it in Spanish. It was like, come on, Spanish. <laughs> Taking communion. And, and so we knew we had to do that. And, and it becomes a routine for people. But I'm going to read to you what we say every, every time we have communion. I'm going to read it to you. And it's in 1 Corinthians 11.24. We almost got it by mem memorized. I mean, I do. It says, and, and Jesus, this is what Jesus said. And when, he, and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Jesus is talking now. This is my body, which is for you. And do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink, whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And then he talks about, um, he's talking about the bread equating it to his body. There's a whole doctrine about that in the denominations, that, you know, how they believe about that. But let me tell you this, all through the Bible, Jesus is talking about his body being the bread. We got that? Are we in agreement with that pretty much? You can see that through the Bible pretty much. Well, his word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And we're to eat that bread. And God's word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That word, we talked about that last week. That word, we're supposed to eat that word. We're supposed to get that word in our spirit. Get that word in our mind. Get the Word of God inside of us. And as the Word of God is inside of us, we begin to react and act differently. And that's spiritual food. Getting the, reading the Word, praying, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, all this is biblical. You know, yeah, yeah, but I don't like to read. Well, yeah, well, do you like havoc in your life and confusion? You like depression? How about a little bit of depression? How's that, how'd that, how'd that work out? How about a little bit of lack of motivation? How about getting blindsided by a sin that you weren't even ready for? How, how about that? You know, that's, that, that ain't cool. But what happens is, is we take in this spiritual food, whether it's praising God in your room or, or praying to, to God or, or coming into God's presence in Him, cleansing your heart and, and helping you work things through and transforming your life. These are all spiritual things. You try to quit drinking, you probably start using dope. You know, that's what happens. You try, I, 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 uh, I know in AA meetings, yeah, we quit drinking, we quit doing drugs, and then pretty soon someone zips off with somebody's wife in there. You know? Stuff happens. It's kind of like it's kind of like how volcanoes, you know, get get made. The earth shifts and pushes down, and then a volcano goes up. That's the way it is with us with sin, man. You know, we think we got rid of it. We think we got a handle on it, and it pops up somewhere else. We need that spiritual food to keep in line with God's word. We need that spiritual food when we fall out of line with God's word. <laughs> Because having that spiritual food will get us back on track. Because yes. God will forgive. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at some uh, things here, a couple of things here in John chapter 6. And, and I didn't put it up there because we're going to read a lot. We're going to read all the way to 40, 25 to 40. Tell me when you're there. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Only Pastor Martin's there. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. Okay, here we go. Right, here we go. I got New Living Translation. And I'm upset because I'm using it, but it's easier to understand. Amen. Everybody should be studying so they can read the King James Version. <laughs> But we're doing the easy form here. It says, when they found him, and these guys were looking for Jesus, all right? Is anybody here looking for Jesus today? Amen. 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 Every day. 
should be looking for him. If you're not looking for him, you should be looking for him. Well, these guys are looking for him. And they said, well, they found him on the other side of the lake. It says the other side. There's just a couple of words, other side, but that, that, that could have been like uh, five miles away. That's a, that's a walk. you got to walk. I don't know how far it was. I don't know where they were. But it says on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. <coughs> We're talking about spiritual food right now. And he's saying that you're looking for me, not because of the miracles you saw me do, or, or the, the uh, prophecies that he fulfilled. He didn't say that, but that's part of it. But because of the food you got when I was there. <laughs> And that's an attitude that runs through people today. Mm -hmm. We're a coddled society in a lot of ways. We are very coddled in many, many ways. There is no one uh, pursuing you, I think, that wants to kill you right now because of your faith. I don't know. Is there enough evidence for that anyway? Would be a good question. But there, it, there is no one pursuing you because of your faith. There is, there, there is no danger of a hurricane hanging over our heads right now. We're in California, man. It's cool over here. There's no famine here. There, there are no um, earthquakes today. It's pretty calm. Things pretty in place. Someone came up for prayer today. And, and, and when I pray for them, they're praying for their family, praying for their kids, and they think it's the most horrible situation, you know, that could exist. And that's what we pray for. We've been praying a long time for them. And, and she comes up today and says, let's pray for my friend, because her brother died last year. And then her granddaughter died a few months later. And then her boyfriend is in a in in a uh, physical rehab because he had a stroke. It's all in one year. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? We're, pre we're doing pretty good. Right? You're probably doing pretty good right now. If you measure it out like that, you're doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. You may, we may be sitting there going, well, it, this, this is a mess right here. I'm sitting there. I'm in a big pile, a big mess. Could be worse. Could be a whole lot worse. So you got these guys that they want, they wanted the bread, they wanted the food, free food. It's free food. And that's the way our society is today. We look at God and, and we look at him like he's a like he he's an ATM card. You could just plug it into the 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 ATM station and you you just, the, your biggest problem is, do you want 20, 40, 60, or 100? That isn't the way God is. No. And people will come and approach God, and it's gimme, gimme, gimme. No. And when we don't get it the way we want it, mm -hmm. then we get mad. There's a lot of people mad at God right now. Yeah. People who used to go to church, mm -hmm. th these churches, th these chairs... We're full, yeah. once upon a time. Yeah. Once upon a time. I've seen this place full a lot of time. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Some people mad at God because the game didn't go the way they wanted it to. Because mm -hmm. ca God called a different play. And it wasn't the way they wanted it to go. That's right. You know? So we, we, we get mad at God. Oh, you brought the bread, Lord, but I wanted tortillas. Don't work like that. God is God. Let's get this straight. We're going to be real clear. Be straight up with it. God is God, and you're not. You're not. I'm not. He is sovereign. And this is His world. Not yours, 
and not mine. And he says when we take our last breath, not you or I. And he takes people home when he wants to take them home. You know? And that's, that's the way it is. But we are in, a, we are in this coddled society and, and way of thinking that, you know, everything should work my way. I want to do church like I want to. I want to read the parts of the Bible, if I read it at all, just the good parts, the ones that I like to make me feel good and whatever. <laughs> Forget about the correction part. I don't need that part. <coughs> I don't like anybody telling me what to do. That's mine. That's my big one. I don't like people telling me what to do. Sharon and I figured it out. I, I think I got hurt about 85% uh, she could tell me what to do. But I got that other 15 and I'll die with it now. I'll hold on to that to the death. Right, well, there are sacred areas. Don't even mess with it. Like how I drive and things like that. And things like that. I didn't tell you that part, Johnny. But anyway, so, so we got to look at how things really are. Measure it out. Think about it. Think about it. You know, everyone around us, everyone around us is doing things unspiritual and not a spiritual way. You know, and, and, and there are few Christians who are doing things in a spiritual way. And when I say that, I'm not talking to you guys because you guys are in Proverbs in the morning, right? Amen? Amen. You guys are in Proverbs in the morning. And you guys are doing different studies and things throughout the week. I'm not even talking about you. But to what degree of effort are you putting into it is what I would talk to you about. I, I, this is a long story, and I've told some of you this before. But when I was uh, when, when I worked uh, at Lucky's cutting cutting meat as a meat cutter. Uh, and we would get together and pray. And um, I started praying by myself, and then uh, my dad came and prayed with me, and then some other some other guy came and prayed, and pretty soon we had over 30 guys praying in, in a room on our break. 30 guys praying in a room every single day for six years. And what I noticed about that, and listen to this and listen to it well, what I noticed about that, that out of those guys... And believe me, we were like brothers, me and these guys. We, we, got, we grew up together. I started working there when I was 18. And a lot of them did too. We were crazy wild people, drinking all the time, and fighting, and, and whatever. But when we started doing this, to the degree of how they let their heart go, their lack of resistance to God was the degree that the Spirit of God manifested on them flowed on them. And what I learned in that, in those six years, was that there were some guys who were just not going to let God love them. What we did before we started was a little exercise. That was a, an accident. It was on purpose. It's for you to gauge where you're at in what we're talking about. If you can open your heart and let the Spirit of God come in, that's a good thing. But if you got obstacles holding back what God wants to do it, spiritually. That's what we're talking about, spiritually. Flow of God. God uh, accepting God's love. Accepting God's presence. Accepting His correction. Accepting being in His presence. That's what I'm talking about. Got to get there. Got to get there. Now you're doing it in a spiritual way. But if you're if you come in here like, oh man, I've been all, in all kinds of different groups. I, I, you, you try going to uh, ministering to the Hispanic people when 80% uh, of the congregation's all uh, women. The other 15% of the guys came in like this. You know, they don't really want to be there. They just want to go to the cantina afterwards. You know, and do whatever. So. They're not really, not really wanting to be there. 
you know. And then the back row, a good part of the time, had people that were high on crack or whatever. That you know, the back rows were. No offense, you guys. <laughs> Not like that. Here. People be high in the back row. <laughs> Come late, leave early. Yep. yep. Yeah, I could see their glassy eyes from way. You know, <laughs> I could tell. Come on, man. Been doing this. How many? Like, is it 39 years or 40 years? Something like that. I've been doing this. It's not my first day. So how? what how, When you came in here, what, what did you come in here doing? What were you thinking? Oh, I gotta come in here again. I don't. I gotta write a hundred sentences. <laughs> but what, 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 what did you do when you came in here? What were you thinking? Come in here with a hunger and thirst for God. That's how you do it. You come. You you come into God's presence with a hunger and thirst for God. Now you're gonna get something out of it. Amen. But you come in with uh, with carnal uh, efforts, trying to intellectualize something, trying to categorize something, trying to figure things out, trying to say, well, you know what, I don't need that. I can, I, I can, I can get to where I need to go all by myself. You just wasted your own time. That's what you did. Submission and power. <laughs> submit to God, He gives you the power. You've got to submit to God, and He will give you the power. That's right. Did I say submit yes. to God, and He'll give you the power? Did I say that? Yes. Did you hear that? Yep. Yeah. If you yeah. submit to God, He will give you the power. Amen. That's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every Whatever you do, you submit to God, and He will give you the power to do it. So, let's go on. We were on, uh, we're on verse 27, I think. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to, an, to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Where are you going to get eternal life? Jesus. From Jesus. Yeah, can you get it somewhere else? Nope. Don't think so. That's not what Jesus said. 28, then they asked him, what, was, what must we do to do the works God requires? That's a big question. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? I'm talking to you talking to you about getting spiritually connected. I'm talking about get that spiritual food. I'm telling you that you got to get close to Jesus. Got to hang out with him. Hang out with plumbers, you start talking about pipes and and uh, monkey wrenches and stuff. You hang out with carpenters, you're going to talk about 2 by 4s and hammers and nails and stuff. Hang out with Jesus and you're going to start talking about the good news. Right. You're going to start, you hang out with Jesus, you're going to start talking about what he's done for you. Amen. Hang out with Jesus, you're going to start saying, you know, I, I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. I couldn't see, I couldn't understand, but now I got it. You know, I messed up back there, but that was back there. Yes. Right? Yes. When you understand, come to the understanding that it was back there, that's a great revelation, brother. That's a big deal when you can leave it behind and go forward. We're talking about a supernatural, miraculous thing to go forward in the power of God. That's what I'm talking to you about. We can carnally try to reason it out with our mind. We can intellectually use positive affirmations all day long. And we can turn something into a mantra but until, until we can make that connection with God and get a spiritual flow of God through us to, what, to, to you get to the point, well, you know what, I don't care. My daughter, uh, Joey, you guys know Joey was at the breakfast. He goes to the breakfast as he comes in the morning. And uh, Joey asked my daughter, he, said, he says, well, you know, uh, your dad, uh, what, you think your dad's going to care about this or that? And he goes, she, she responded really fast, my dad doesn't care about what anybody thinks. He doesn't care about what anybody thinks. You know what? 
I don't care about what anybody thinks. I care about what he thinks. That's right. I care about what God thinks. And some of us, these guys are going, well, what do we have to do? What do you think you got to do? You got to stop looking and approaching the world in a carnal way, in a worldly way. You cannot be a Christian and live in, in, in a carnal manner. You've got to live in a spiritual manner. Yes. You can't go put a football helmet on and go play baseball. It just don't work. And that's the same thing. That's the same thing as trying to be a carnal Christian in this world. All we do is be hypocritical. That's all we do. That's right. So, so in... And this thing of, of uh, what do we do, think about it. People die every day. Some people died this week. And that I know, and maybe some people died that you know. But they're going to die. And they're going to go to be with the Lord or they're going to go to somewhere else. But that ain't got nothing to do with you. And, and some people are going to lose their jobs. And maybe that might even be you. And some people are going to get sick. And some people are going to get bad diagnoses. Mm -hmm. That's life. Welcome to life. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to start doing drugs. Some people are going to OD. All kinds of things happening. Suicides. All kinds of things happening in this world are going to happen. God is God and you're not. God is God and I'm not. And thank God that I'm not. And thank God that I'm not. You know, it, it, it's, it's just we, we need to recognize who we're working for. He said, what do we have to do? So then the idea comes to me, who, who are you working for? If you're working for the Lord Jesus Christ... At the job you're at, you're on the right track. Because the day that boss doesn't like what you did, I'm not working for that guy, I'm working for Jesus. Amen. I don't know, it works for me. I don't know if it'll work for you. I work for Jesus. I don't have a job right now, because I'm retired. But, seems like I have a job. I have a lot of jobs. Can't figure out what it is yet, though. But I'm always busy doing something. So my job and my boss is Jesus. What is your job? And who is your boss? My real job is serving the Lord. And my job has been serving the Lord for the last 40 years. I worked and had a business, but my job was serving the Lord. Always serving the Lord. So, if my job is serving the Lord, and my boss is Jesus, can I get fired? No. They can give me my last paycheck and, and lay me off and say, you know what, uh, you got to go, because, uh, you know, we don't have any more work for you, or we don't like your hair because it's got a white streak over here or whatever. Hey, I go, all right. I don't work for you anyway. I'm not working for it, for that guy. I work for Jesus. Get that? When I work for Jesus, I'm going to go 100%. I'm going to go 100%. And if I go 100%, guess what happens? Doors start opening for me. Doors start opening for me. Because I'm not like everyone else. Because when... I don't get a pat on the back. I'm not working for that pat on the back. I'm working for Jesus. So I'm not looking for that. I don't care about that. Well, we'll give you a bonus if you do this or that. I'm all right. I don't get my bonuses from you, bro. I get my bonuses from Jesus. I, I don't know if it comes in my check or if it comes over here, or if it comes over there. I don't know, but it comes. God supplies. Okay, so so I go to the doctor and the doctor says, "Hey, what? You know what? You only got two weeks to live." And I go, "You, you can't tell me that. 
Only Jesus can tell me that. I'm dead in Christ. How am I going to die? I just walked from one room to another. That's all. That's all. That's what that's about. Amen. You believe that? I walk from one room to another. I'll leave you guys crying if you like me. And if you don't, you might be laughing. But but I'm walking from one. I, I, I'm I'm going. All right. That is having the right biblical perspective. But you know, we lose a father, we lose a mother, we lose a brother, and I lost all of those. And people get bummed out and want to kill themselves and stuff and go off into drugs and alcohol and whatever. But that's all like off, man. And we had a guy come here and preach one day and he, and he was talking to Pastor Martin and I. The restaurant, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, if you remember Ryan, and he told us, he says, you know, I've been doing the wrong thing for a lot of years. We go, what's that? And he says, well, I've been going to prayer meetings and people get sick and, and it looks like they're really sick and they might die. And I've been, I've been praying that they won't die. Yeah. He goes, why am I praying that they won't die? If heaven is a better place. Amen. If heaven is a place we're trying to get to, if, if that's where being with Jesus for eternity, then why am I praying that the guy won't get there? See, that's how we think. Yeah. I should be having my mind taking care of business here and doing what I got to do. Yes. But in the back of my mind, I go, I want to get there. Amen. I don't know. Do you want to get there? I want to yes. get there. Yes. I want to get there. So... That's, who are you working for? 30. So they asked him. So they asked him. What sign then will you give? That we may see it and believe you. What will you do? And there's another thing that people are asking today. Show me. If you're God, show me. Uh, I'm going to pray to you, and if you do it, well, maybe I'll show up and thank you at church. I'll tell you, after all these years, and I bet Pastor Martin feels the same way. You get some guy come here. If you're in a church for enough time, I was, I was in uh, one church five and a half years, the next one 17 years, and then in my own six. And then here I've been, I don't know how long, six years. And then I was in church on vacation. For a few years. And uh, it really makes me mad when somebody comes comes up and says to you something like, uh, God, it made me so mad I forgot what it was. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they come up to you and, they're, and they're, they ask for prayer. I didn't know this in the beginning. You come up and ask for prayer, and they don't remember that you prayed for them. Like, especially as a big church. Like, I was in a 5,000 5, people church. And they don't remember that you prayed for them. They go, hey, 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 brother, didn't I pray for you like three years ago for the same yeah. thing? <laughs> Where have you been for three years, brother? <laughs> well, you know, this and that, this and that. And then the guy leaves, you pray for him, he comes back in another two years, three yeah. years. They ask for prayer. You don't remember that you, you don't remember you prayed for him, but I do. You go, hey, didn't we pray for him? Isn't this the second time we prayed in six years? You feel like a hey. Wake up, man. What, what are you doing? You know? And, and and that happens. So I say, settle it right now. Let's handle it right now. Stop fighting. Stop, stop making up your own rules. Yeah. We had a guy in our neighborhood named Roddy Grajeda. Every time we played marbles, he made it change the rules. <laughs> we could walk away with our marbles. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we played another game, and he made up different rules. Pretty soon when we figured out, this, these, these guys are Roddy Grajeda-ing us. This, this, is, this is what, this, you know. Quit doing that to God, man. Amen. Quit changing the rules. Quit, quit trying to write your own Bible. Yep. Quit trying to be God yourself. Want to be God yourself? 
change the rules, make your own rules, do it, do it how you want to do it. It don't work like that. It don't yeah. fly like that. No. Now you're doing it in a carnal way. You're not doing it in a supernatural way. I know you don't like it. I don't even want to do it. Who in the heck wants to get up at 5 in the morning and pray before you go to work? Who wants to do that? The guy who keeps doing it is the one who wants to do it. Because once you do it, God hooks you in. And then you'll do it again. And then you'll do it again. And then you do it again. Pretty soon you're hanging out with Jesus. When you hang out with Jesus, you start changing. You start transforming. You start, you start talking in a different way. The bad words start to fade away. Amen. And, and, and the, the, the anger starts to move on. Yeah, I know, I know you see Christians that are the opposite of that. Yeah, I know. But what we said last week, I don't know if you remember, 40% of the Christians are reading their Bibles and praying. The other 60% are walking around putting on a show. That's right. Putting on the show and making and making most of the noise. You know, a lot of noisy Christians are in the 60%. You know? That's, that happens. I was just born with a big mouth. I don't know which percent I was in. <laughs> just always made a lot of noise. Anyway, continuing. So, verse uh, 31. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they respond, Sir, they said, always give us this bread. And then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. And whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I'm going to read that again because I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't read too good. Verse 35 says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread. Does anybody believe that Jesus is the bread? Amen. Amen. I am the bread and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Does anyone believe that? Amen. Amen. Never go hungry. Amen. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. And don't be, be like these guys up here in verse 28 that's hanging around because he's giving them bread and, and sushi. You know, that's not what he's talking about. He is talking about that spiritual food, yes. that hunger that we have inside, that void that we have inside, that we try to fill with alcohol, or drugs, or women, or material things, or working 18 hours a day, or being busy so we don't have to think. How many know what I'm talking about, being so busy so you don't have to think? I, 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 I did, I have done that, yeah. Or drink so much so you don't have to think. I did that too. You know, I don't want to think about it. You know. So, he's the one who fills that hunger. That bread fills that void that causes depression. Depression. Did I say depression? Yes. Yeah. Did I say that word everybody's afraid of? Depression? That word no one will say, I'm depressed. Okay? He is the one that removes depression. Yeah. That bread, that spiritual food, yes. that word, that connection with God in praising songs, uh, praise songs and hymns and spiritual yes. songs yes. takes away depression. Amen. Darn it. Listen. Amen. What, I, what I'm saying. It gives motivation. Here's motivation. Yeah. Motivates you. 3 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, this morning. So I'm so motivated, I'm bouncing off the walls. 
Because one of my brothers in the Lord died. But he died the right way. He died with one foot in heaven and one foot dragging, the, you know, trying to push himself out of this world. That's how he died. Song leader singing and praising God all the way to the last minute, to the last time. He was dying on his last day and said, I got to go and lead the songs. And his daughter said, no, you're not going anywhere, man. Stay right here. Put your oxygen tube down and stay right there. He played and praised God and used two bottles of oxygen during the whole course of the thing. You know? But he did it. And he did it well. But he played a song. I don't know if any of you heard it. Johnny Cash sang it. But there's, there's a, it, it's, it's sung, I think, better by someone else. And um, it says, ain't no grave going to keep my body down. Mm -hmm. yeah. There ain't no grave going to keep my body down. And that brother kept singing that song, kept singing that song. And, I, and this morning I was listening to it, I'm bouncing off the walls. If Jesus got out of that grave, I'm walking out of it too. Amen. That's the part that got me. If Jesus walked out of that grave, I'm walking out of it too. If, if, if Jesus died on the cross for me to overcome depression, I'm overcoming it. Amen. You know? And, and so when, when he feeds me spiritually, he's giving me motivation. When I'm taking in that spiritual food, I, I'm, I'm being forgiven. Did you hear that? I'm being forgiven. There's some people need to be forgiven and accept that forgiveness and walk in that forgiveness. And leave all that stuff back there. Amen. Can we leave that stuff back there? Can, can we act and put action to that thought that I am forgiven? That I don't care what anybody thinks. Somebody with me? Amen. I don't care what anybody thinks. Amen. They're not my boss. Right. You hear little kids say, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> you're not my dad. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> you got to start copying those Come kids. On. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you're not my boss. He, Jesus is my boss. Amen. Is Jesus your boss? Make him your boss. Yes. Right. Submission, power. Submission, power. Amen. Submission, power. Did I say submission and power? Yes. Submit to the real boss. Yes. And you'll never get fired. Amen. They may tell you, we don't have no work for you over here. Okay, Jesus, where do I go now? Amen. What am I going to do now? I'll Amen. go over there. And, da, 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 and that, I got a better job than, I, than, than before. That's right. Some of you, I'm, uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir in here. Some of you guys got this so good. <laughs> some of you know this so well. You know, I, 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 I had to tell some church people one time. They were thinking they were ministering to some homeless people. After they got done talking to the, the homeless guy, and I go, you're talking to the wrong crowd, man. That message you just told that homeless guy, hey, you need to go into church and tell those people that. Amen. Amen. Because when you're homeless, I don't know if you've ever been homeless, but if you're homeless, you got you got to have some faith to get through the night. If somebody could stab you while you're sleeping, or somebody could take your stuff while you're sleeping, or if you leave your backpack in a bush you're praying that God don't you know God cover that bush so no one comes and steals it so I don't know some of you might know what I'm talking about but there are homeless Christians out there believers that are walking in faith every single day we used to talk to them on the food line we used to talk to them on the food line you know so we, we sometimes we got to think like that we're spoiled and coddled in a lot of ways there are some guys that wish that they had your bed right there where you sleep right now. There's a lot of men that wish they had your bed right there where you sleep right now. I know that. I know that. But God blessed you to be there. And God blessed you to be in this room today. Amen. And you couldn't be here unless God called you. And, and Pastor Martin and I and, and Sylvia and Bill and Belinda and Richard and, and, and Sharin and, and, and whoever else comes here, that, that, that we're here for you. Why? Because we believe in you. Amen. We believe in your future. We believe God has a plan for your life. 
And you may come here and then you leave and you never come back again. Don't say bye, forget about who we are and whatever. But I'm going to catch you up there in heaven, bro, and ask you why you weren't here. Why you didn't come back and say hi. I'm going to catch you up there. I'm going to catch you up there. But that's okay. Because I'm working for my boss. You ain't my boss. I'm not working for you. I'm working for Jesus. Who are you working for? Worship team. Yeah. Yeah.